Okay. All right. Hello, hello, folks. We are live. I'll pull back uh, the music a little bit. Cool. And I see us. Just a good sign. I see you, Jonathan. Hello, hello. Can you give me an audio check, please? Hey, good afternoon, Sam. All right. I hear you. So hopefully we should be all good. All right. So um, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, both of us are on the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> the chat room is filling up. Joe, good to see you, Joe. Good to see you. The answer is always 42. All of life's questions the answer is 42. Yeah, so um, welcome to Coded Live. Uh, since uh, this is the first uh, stream of the week, actually, uh, we have a fun week uh, planned for you uh, ahead. So uh, today is Monday. You're going to see us do some CMS and then a podcast uh, later today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm doing Unity. Um, Wednesday, uh, we are doing React and UI. And Thursday, I normally do um, kind of a Xamarin or a XAML focused show. I don't think that's happening this week because we are replacing it with something super fun. It's going to be an all day stream. It's one of our quarantine coding uh, sessions. And you're going to see all of us take turns, well, primarily two of our teammates uh, coding all day, uh, bringing on some amazing guests. And we'll do kind of a throwback uh, Thursday on jQuery, which should be super fun. And then Fridays, uh, I normally close it out with a chat show. So it should be a fun, fun week. And we're looking forward. So, uh, my name is Sam Basu. I am a dev advocate um, here at Progress Software. And with me, I have my good friend, Jonathan Reed. Hello, sir. Hello, Sam. I'm still just a solutions engineer for Sitefinity. Nothing too exciting. You're amazing. <laughs> So, um, welcome to this stream here on Coded Live. Uh, as you all know, we uh, Mondays we devote this hour, hour and a half to kind of learning CMS, particularly for me, uh, since I am uh, not really good at this stuff. And I'm learning how flexible a modern CMS can be with the integrations and bringing in styles and building repeatable functionality. So I'm uh, super excited as we go along. So just to kind of maybe bring folks up to speed, Jonathan started from absolute scratch and uh, we are building a sort of a restaurant website. And uh, we are envisioning that we have been working with um, um, a design team. Oh, hang on. Uh, chat rooms, Joe is saying, can't hear the guest. Uh-oh. Do you want me to sing? Should I sing, sing? <laughs> Your audio sing. meter good. Looks good. I might um, bump you up a little bit. Bump me up. How about a sound check now? Yeah, you look good. Uh, so, Joe, um, let us know if you still can't. Nope, nope super low. Super low. This low? All right, how oh. about to bump you all the way up? Now, <laughs> it's, for me, you're looking like in the red. Can't hear you. Hey, quit talking about my finances again, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can hear Sam loud and clear, but not not me today. Oh man, what did I do? What did I do? Can you bump up your uh, Skype audio? Because the two of us are on a yeah, Skype call. Yeah, yeah. Me, go all the way up. Let me see. Let me switch one of these numbers here. Whoops, wrong screen. There we go. Um. Let's see, audio, video, microphone. Okay, I think I got her all the way turned up. <clears throat> okay. All right, well, it's almost like he's covering. I am not. Is this better? Huh? Anybody? No, yeah, this better? is better. Okay. better. All right, okay. all right, cool, cool. All right, um, so uh, I think we should be set. Um, so Jonathan, I think last week we um, you did some of the templates that you brought on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Where did we stop? I, I see the spinner that we did. Yep, yeah, so last week we accomplished this uh, carousel rotator using an open source uh, tiny slider. Um, we additionally, you know, until this point, um, and as a reminder, you can find all these on the Code It Live YouTube channel of progress um, for our previous three shows. Uh, but really where we're at, um, you know, as far as things go is we've been, you know, again, looking through these designs that our design team came up and I'll pull up another one here. Um, and, and we've been focusing mostly on the homepage only because, well, it's 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 really easy way to show a lot of value to our stakeholders. <laughs> 
Uh, that's not the only reason, though. Um, it, it obviously has a lot of the components on it to really reach out into our entire site. So we focused a lot on the main header here at the top, as well as, well, we haven't done much in the footer, uh, but we at least laid out the areas. And then, of course, last week we accomplished um, <clears throat> finishing out our custom template for our um, content type slider which we generated i think in week two or, or or three and slider is a a content type that we generated out with the sitefinity module builder which is really the core focus of of the cms to create your own types of content so you know every customer that that utilizes sitefinity uh really does it in their own way and that's really the the major benefit uh of the platform is you can make it your own at any point in time so whether that's today when you purchase it or that's tomorrow and you decide you need something new uh to meet a new business objective or or whatever it might be system is ultimately flexible so that's kind of where we're we're sitting as is right now um and again we've taken out these these designs here and we'll just kind of briefly review them so again we've been working on this home page here um we'll get into some of these like this is a menu page here um additionally let's see what other pages we got this one this page right here um this is gonna be one of our options for today sam so today <clears throat> i was hoping i could offer up some options for uh what we might code on and uh, those and i'll present those in just a second after we review some designs here so this would be one option and we'll come back to it in just a moment um, so we got some listing views here, uh, some news listings, you know, we'll get into some of these content areas a little bit later. Um, you also notice here, um, we'll need to enable uh, some features like commenting. Uh, so we'll talk about how we can enable that. And some of these might come today, some might come in, in, in future shows, uh, but we're definitely going to get into to those components as is. <clears throat> We got our events type of content in here. Lucky for us, this is an out of the box type that Sitefinity ships to. So we're gonna come in here and we're really gonna style it up to meet our needs. Again, might not specifically be today, uh, but at some point during our journey of building this out here. Um, so again, these are the designs that we're working on today. Uh, we'll also talk about, again, at some point in time, is utilizing forms. So, you know, we like to pass our form creation capabilities to our marketing and business team, right? Sitefinity gives you that full functionality right out of the box, meaning you get a drag and drop builder really exactly like the page builder, but it's just for a form. So we'll look at these again in some point during our, our journey. So as this is just really a recap, just to show you uh, everything that we're putting together here, we'll even get into designing some real one-off specific templates like these landing page uh, templates we have here. And I think that's kind of the last one. And then lastly, here's just a quick look at what uh, you know the mobile header might look like. So for today's these, journey, These fruits Sam, look so good, Jonathan. Oh. <laughs> well, I, 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 I skipped lunch. I thought I would eat after this, oh, uh, so I'm getting you know. hungry. <laughs> I still got half of my cold pizza sitting on a notepad next to me, so don't uh, don't don't feel bad. I got water today, though. I I got that one. So, there you go. You know. Representing a nice Ball State University. If you need a nice college education, I didn't go there, but uh, I happen to live in Indiana. <laughs> All right, so let's get some of these out of the way, and let me uh, give you a couple paths that we could. Um, choose to go down today we might be able to accomplish both um we might do one or you know one or the other uh really just kind of depends on on some things and timing and, and and all that so one path that we could today would uh that we could take today would be uh extending sitefinity models <clears throat> so what does that mean well sitefinity comes out of the box with um its models and its controllers already defined so that's really uh you know from a .NET perspective, that's really your server side uh, interactions uh, that are happening. Uh, it takes care of all that behind the scenes for us. But there are some occasions where we need to add in some additional fun functionality. Yeah, we're gonna put in functionality, Sam. That's a new one, right? We want some functionality. So, Woo! welcome tell, Monday. <laughs> tell me what you mean by comes with models built in. Yeah. So yeah, let's yeah let's review that just a little bit here and what what that really means. So. <clears throat> If we head on back over to some pages here, and let's hop open uh, our um, our homepage here. Um, I don't think we have any content in this particular um, content type as of yet, but let's take a look at something. Um, let's take a look at news. So when I drag and drop a news widget onto the page, 
Sitefinity goes back and reaches into my content type specifically, much like it did for our, our slider up here, meaning we have a central area for us to manage this content, and we want now we want to display it on the screen. But I, I don't expect to have to go to this page to manage a slider. I expect to go to a central screen. So when you drag and drop one of these widgets onto the page, the model, the view, and the controller are, are technically all defined by Sitefinity for you, even if you create your own custom content type like our sliders. Sitefinity generated a widget for us, um, which we utilized, which came under our sliders area here, and we dragged and dropped it onto the page. Again, Sitefinity's handling uh, the interactions on the controller. So if you're doing anything like paging or uh, you're using a a uh, categories widget or tags widget and you're doing filtering uh, Sitefinity is handling all those routes for you in that controller but again there are occasions where you need to uh, override it or you want to extend the behaviors of Sitefinity that's where we may want to do something like extending the model and or controller so one example for this particular site is you might notice we have a, a couple menu options here at the top which don't display in our designs uh, but we do need these pages, uh, but we don't need them necessarily to display, uh, here's one, um, in our our main uh, desktop navigation, but we need to display them in mobile navigation. Mm -hmm. Since we're using Twitter Bootstrap out of the box, it actually expects those components to be part of the DOM itself, right? <clears throat> so I need my users to be able to have a way to say this page should show up in mobile navigation, but not in desktop navigation. So how do I do that? So, so yeah, so before you move forward, can, can I ask yeah. you a quick question? Like when you yeah. drop that news um, widget in there, like yeah. is it based on like convention that it by default looks for a news a model named news and a corresponding view? Co yes, more or less correct. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, uh, what happens is, um, as I guess I didn't have my Visual Studio open, um, as we get into um, as we get into the um, so if we pop into here, as we get into the views themselves, uh, we can actually uh, follow a naming convention. So it's a, a folder naming convention as well as a a file naming convention. So. The folder determines uh, the location of the templates itself, and then the naming convention of the files determines is it a list template or is it a single item template? Uh-oh, what happened here? My Visual Studio is going crazy. Okay, well, we'll open it in code today. Do something else. <laughs> Hey, it's Monday for our Visual Studio. Oh, well. man, the computer Monday, too. All right, so let's quickly open up a folder here. Sorry, guys. Nothing like it. See, we made it through the video and the, and the sound okay pretty easy today. Now we can't make it through the Visual Studio stuff, right? Of course. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and open a folder here real quick. So our naming convention, folder convention, uh, are really uh, about, oh, yeah, where these particular components uh, might live. So let me... Go ahead and open this folder. All right. So while you're doing that, Jonathan, just a quick yeah. note. So just to get your um, your audio loud and clear, I bumped um, uh, the audio all the way up uh, for you and any system audio. So if uh, I, I pulled back the music, if anybody just wants to uh, adjust that or put it further back, let me know. Thanks, Sam. <clears throat> yeah, in, in chat, let us know if yeah, if there are any additional uh, issues. So. <clears throat> Um, all right, so in uh, Visual Studio Code here, I've opened up my Sitefinity web app folder. Uh, this is what holds our, our code file. Um, additionally, in here, we have two places that we can store uh, widget templates. One place would be in our uh, MVC folder at the root, so the typical place you might find it in a .NET web application, right? And then additionally from there, we have the views folder. Here, if I would like to create um, a location for um, my news templates to live, I could simply create a new file folder here called news, right? And follow the naming convention that I have. Or I can also place them if I, oh, one other side note about this main views folder, the, the root MVC folder. This applies the entire system, right? 
where a resource package uh, gets tied together via via uh, the layout or the template that the user selects. So the, the benefit being, if you use them in the temp or the the resource packages, you could have multiple themes, if you will. You see air quotes. Woo woo. All right. You have multiple themes, if you will. Um, and then that way, when they select a particular template, um, now they only get a certain set of of uh, uh, widget templates in it. Okay, can I pause you for just a second Please. for two things? Uh, one is, yeah. folks in this chat room, uh, I think we forgot to mention this, but we are giving away a little bit of swag. Uh, Jonathan has secured some Slide Trinity shirts and some stickers that are, should be pretty cool. Uh, so probably uh, another 10 minutes or so, I'm going to pop open a question. Uh, if you can answer that, or whoever is the first one to answer that wins the swag for the day. Okay, so that's one. And then number two, Jonathan, one does not just simply switch IDEs. So you got to tell me. So we've been in Visual Studio all day or throughout uh, this process and you switch to VS Code today. What's different? What works and what does not work? So with Visual Studio Code, um, you can do really the, the client side uh, interactions. Uh, so you can mess with CSS, HTML uh, and JavaScript. Outside of that, I don't typically use it. In fact, my Visual Studio opened and then immediately crashed. That's the only reason uh, why I uh, switched uh, over to this. So I didn't want to mess with it and figure out why it was uh, doing. So um, this may limit us a little bit in what we accomplished today. Um, it was up and running. And then once we started here, it, it went away. And now it doesn't want to apparently open. So Well, I mean, it, it's real life. So this might also teach us a few things. Now, uh, in terms of functionality as you're writing code, like if you're writing JavaScript or uh, C Sharp, if you have the right extensions in VS Code, I mean, you, you should be good to go. You will get IntelliSense. Um, but uh, I'm not sure like how like some of the Sitefinity based IntelliSense, like if you add right. uh, like a custom thing, how much of that's going to show up in VS Code? Yeah. So since Sitefinity is still built on the .NET framework, um, it's not that easy to utilize within Visual Studio Code. In fact, I've not successfully been able to get it to build the solution personally, um, but I haven't spent that much time utilizing it. Uh, for me, uh, again, I'll use Visual Studio Code again in this quick example. One, it's a little bit more lightweight, as you guys know, than uh, Visual Studio itself. Um, and again, just to show off where some some things were, were loading. Uh, I don't typically use it again unless I'm just doing uh, client side yeah. uh, type of. V VS type Code of has been amazing. Like I remember, oh, yeah. like three, four years back at the first uh, Microsoft build when they announced VS Code, like there are groups of developers who are focused on like JavaScript and uh, OSX and open source technologies that have not touched a Microsoft product in years and years. And right. now a big percentage of them use VS Code as their ID or their editor because it's lightweight, works everywhere consistently. Uh, it's, it's great. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, no, I've, uh, yeah, I use it for, uh, yeah, again, mostly client side stuff, at least in my, my Sitefinity uh, realm, of, realm of things. Now, you know, with the, uh, with the, the new, um, you know, three tiered architecture that's coming, uh, and then, you know, it's, you know, the things that we're doing with, uh, you know, .NET Core, uh, you know, more and more will be able to be uh, utilized, um, you know, through uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. Yep, cool. Also, it's funny. Like your um, your background is just kind of lighting on and off. It's like something uh, somebody's just doing like LED light strips <laughs> behind you because you. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's looking cool. looking fine, but I'm just saying like you probably are not doing it intentionally. I don't think so. No, <laughs> I mean I'm down for a rave. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, you know. All right. All right. So, let's see here. Okay. So let's see here. Um, let me try one more time here with my Visual Studio here. Um, if not, we'll go on to something else. OK. <clears throat> um, let's see here. All right. So. Let's see what's going on here. I'll try to pop it open one more time. Okay, so it's opening. 
Is it like crashing the moment it opens up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Might have got it this time. Okay, there we go. I think I got it this time. Yeah, it popped over. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. There we go. All right, let's get that little guy out of the way. Ah, Visual Studio, so nice. Oh, what this is a pro. What is my trial? I don't use trials. That was the problem. I mean, oh, what, what is this Visual Studio? Is it Community Edition? Because then you can just like oh. sign in. No, it's it's Enterprise through my MSDN license, which is uh, strange. Well, uh, well, it still lets you get in, I suppose. Yeah, but it, it immediately uh, immediately stopped. Okay. Um, well, let's do... We'll do something else. Uh, give me just a quick second here. Uh, why can we have something e easy, easy, peasy? All right, let's do this. Um, man, that's really going to mess me up here. Okay. Could you like sign in with like a regular account, like an Outlook or a Hotmail account, and just see what it does? Because the community yeah, features are try it. free. <clears throat> yeah. True. 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 Um. Let's try. Let's try that again. That must have been what happened before. Is that it said I needed the thing, and then I just didn't right. see the. The warning. We're not seeing our <laughs> VS screen, by the way. We, we, we yeah, it's on the yeah. other one. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. No, no, no worries. <laughs> okay, it opens. While you're doing that, should I pop open the chat uh, yeah. question? Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a question. Win some swag. Oh, and just real quick, uh, let me. I was trying to. Okay, let's see if I can pop this up. Yeah, there we go. All right, chat room, uh, or anybody else tuning in. Um, question When was Sidefinity 4.0 first released? And keep in mind, Sidefinity's present version is 13. Uh, so mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. a few years back at least. Um, but this was a big, big release. Um, you don't have to have that an exact date, uh, but just a close enough month and a year would do. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the reason the reason we brought up this specific um, release was uh, this was when we migrated from um, or to .NET Framework, basically. Uh, so it was the uh, first first initial uh, release of uh, those components, uh, again, moving into the .NET Framework. And I thought it was uh, exciting to bring up because, uh, you know, as 13 has rolled out just about a month ago, uh, we have released um, really a new architecture again uh, for Sitefinity. So <clears throat> it was just a, a, an ode to, uh, you know, where we've come from, I suppose. Yeah. So that this is going to stay up for another minute or so. If anybody knows, you can Google it. Oh yeah, <laughs> if Google you can it. find it, or Bing it. I'm, I'm probably the most prolific Bing user outside of Microsoft folks who work on Bing. Do you still do you still get paid for it? Do you still <laughs> pay people to use it? No, but they do pay you in rewards. Like every search you do, like you end up earning more and more points, and then you can redeem the points right. for like Starbucks or Xbox cards. Nice, nice. Yeah, I thought it. I thought they had some program uh, like that. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, well, I am trying something else here real quick. But yeah, it looks like that version of Visual Studio just apparently yep. is not going to want to work for me today. So we'll exit out of there. So if you do Visual VS Code, like, could you still do a build with a command line or maybe switch to the ones with yeah, uh, N NPM type stuff that we can do for today? Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll figure something out here real quick. Um, oh, there it went. 
Okay, so let me open that back up. I should be able to just do it from... Uh, I'll just do like an MS build from command line or something. Yeah, go hardcore. We're, we're, we're not coding notepad. <laughs> Can I at least use plus plus? <laughs> What are we looking at? This is a black screen, I see. Yeah, it's still loading up uh, Visual Studio here. Yeah. Whatever it's doing. Or it's trying to. Oh, hey, 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 we have an answer. So, yeah. Avakan, oh, Siphon is CMS 4.0, January 14th, 2011. Right down to the day! Man, yeah. that, was, that was amazing! Five. Five. Rainbows, rainbows, awesome. All right. I don't know if you actually use it or you looked it up, but that is pretty spot on. Well done. So nine years back, more than nine years back. <laughs> awesome, yay. Right, yeah. Okay, so um, Abakan, uh, whisper me. So you know the whisper command in, in Twitch. So whisper me uh, info, uh, I can give you my email. Uh, send me your uh, your details as to where you are at, and we'll uh, send you your swag. Okay, but congratulations! Yep. Congratulations! And we'll have a we'll have a yeah we'll have a new question um, next week. Yep. Or actually, sorry, we won't meet next week. Just as a side note, while we'll, we'll wait enough. Oh, I got it to load again. Uh, we're not going to meet next week. Uh, Progress was kind enough to give Sam and I Monday off as well uh, for the uh, North American holiday of uh, Independence Day. So thank you, Progress, for giving us uh, a day off. We appreciate it. So you'll miss us next week, guys. Um, but don't don't fret. Uh, we will return thirteenth, uh, right, Sam? Does that sound good? Yeah, the Monday after, yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so let me see here. It's been, okay, so run. All right, so. Let's see if it'll, uh, I don't even know if I have all these extensions in here to even do this. Well, let me see if I can even. Get it to build. All right. Well, well, we can definitely talk about the concepts. Whether or not it gets all the way through is, is one way or another. Okay. Uh, so two. Okay. So two. Well, the second option we're not actually going to be able to, um, to, custom widget. Well, I wanted to show off the Visual Studio tools, so we won't talk about that one so much. So let's focus on on uh, extending some some models. How about that? Sure. Um, so what we'll do here is. We're going to borrow some some code that I already have. <clears throat> so let me see here. And OK, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to extend the model for navigation. Um, and the reason is, is um, what we've talked about uh, to this point is the fact that we have uh, our bootstrap navigation. So here at the top, we have some of these navigation items which uh, we need to hide or in desktop or vice versa, either way. Um, so let's let's quickly, uh, again, we're using bootstrap and we are utilizing the, um, you know, bootstrap navigation. So it expects these list items to be in, in the DOM, right? I was just going to pop it into mobile here so we can look at it on the front end. And let me move this to the side here so we can get a little better view. OK, and let's get this fit. OK, so this is an iPad. Let's get some a little ton smaller. Let's start a little pixel two. pixel two. It is. OK, so you can see as we drop that down, it, of course, has all those navigation items in it. Um, if we look back at our designs here, we're really only expecting Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. About five pages at the top level. Looks like About Us has some some child pages underneath it. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that we're showing two levels. Um, but uh, we want our, our non-technical users the ability to say, I want to add a new menu item, potentially at the top level, or even at lower levels, that says, hide this um, in desktop view, right? So the first operation, that we'll have to do is actually add a custom field in Sitefinity. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so part of the extensions of Sitefinity is that you can add custom fields to any of the out of the box um, content types or components of the system all through the UI. Um, so if you remember back uh, a couple of weeks ago or maybe three sessions or, or so ago, we used the module builder to generate out our slides. In this case, we can actually head right over to pages and we can uh, add a custom field right from the pages area. How do we do it? Well, it's as simple as uh, selecting the settings options here. And then over here on the right hand side, we can see things like permissions, uh, custom fields. That's what we want in just a moment. Of course, manage templates if you want to change the home page. Um, or, of course, navigating to the recycle bin in case you maybe accidentally deleted something. Not that any of us have ever done that, but uh, let's go on to our custom uh, so, fields for pages. Yeah, Sam, sorry. Hang, hang on there for a second. So, yeah. like, normally, if you're just doing plain JavaScript stuff, like, you would look at the browser agent and, and see where you're coming from. Like, uh, you know, the music just keeps bumping up and down randomly. <laughs> okay, there we go. Me. So, um, what, what exactly is a custom field? Like, what do you mean by custom field? Sure. So, this is a, a property um, that the users, so our users, our front-end users, our editors, our authors, can actually fill out directly uh, in the UI itself. So, when I come to... Here, I'll give you an example. So, if I come into our, our homepage here, I could have gone at this another way, but uh, if I open up the homepage and I take a look at its titles and properties, there's actually some deeper uh, settings about the page that I can set. This is going to be one of them uh, as soon as we add it. Uh, but let's go ahead here and see what, what properties that we have as of right now. And we'll get those up here. We will go titles and properties. So here's the titles and properties we can configure as of right now, which are things that you would expect, like the, the title of the page, where does the page live, should it show in navigation ever? Hmm. This is a good point right here. This show in navigation, though, is is, is letting Sitefinity itself let the navigation widget that we have across the top know, should this ever show up at all? So this option didn't really uh, work for us because it would actually hide it on the server side and not actually expose it to my page template or my widget template or whatever I might be uh, utilizing at the time. So it didn't it didn't work for our exact need. Um, so here uh, we got our titles for search engines and descriptions and some advanced options. So when we go add a new field here in a moment. Um, it's going to show up here at the bottom of the list and allow us to hide the page in uh, desktop mode. Well, what's in the advanced options, like without you adding anything? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I, I figured you'd be too scared to click it. <laughs> I see, okay. Sitemaps so, is cell of view state, yeah, okay. So as, uh, there's some additional SEO components here. Um, do you want the site search index to find it? So that's the Sitefinity search index. And then also, do you want, um, you know, uh, Bing, Google, uh, those search engines to crawl uh, your site as well? So you can opt those in and out. And there's some additional uh, parameters that you could set here around caching uh, and other components as well. All right. Okay. So let's take uh, let's take a step back here. And one more back this way. All right, so let's go ahead and add a custom field to this. Um, and I think we really only need a Boolean field because it's really a yes or a no. Do you want it to show up or do you not want it to show up? Um, I think that's, that's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and add a custom field here. And then we can add additional fields. <clears throat> you noticed um, that we had some things like our um, search engine fields, but Maybe you're interested in social sharing fields, like open graph fields. This is the same place that you would add those as well. Uh, so here we can come and take a look at all of our field types. These are the same types that you could have added to a custom content type, uh, but these really are uh, on a page itself. No, no difference. Uh, again, just picking the type of, of field that you want. Um, here you can also see here's our open graph field. So we could add our, our open graph uh, title. Uh, description, image, or video, and again, this is for your social sharing capabilities. Nice. But in this case, we're really just looking for this yes/no field. And what do you? Yeah, yes/no. What do you want the name to be? Um, so, if the box is checked, 
um, then it will show. Um, yeah. So what do we want to call it? Uh, let's call it uh, hide um, in desktop nav. I think that's pretty straightforward. Hide in desktop nav. Again, as always, hardest part of our jobs, right? Giving it a darn name. Good news is here on the next screen, we're gonna be able to give it a really nice human readable name as well as giving it instructions as well. So, you know, if we weren't confident that the name we gave it was enough to make the users want to use it or know how to use it, we can add additional uh, information for them uh, to be successful. So here's some additional settings. Uh, what do we want the label to be? We'll, we'll, call, we'll say uh, hide page in desk top mode any instructional task this hides the page when checked in the desktop mode of navigation okay so we're gonna give them nice good instructions here <clears throat> predefined value i'm gonna go ahead and say false okay so basically um we're going to say uh, allow it to show by by default, right? And how, how would it know? I'm still confused. Like, is it in appearances or limitations that you'll set something? Like, how would it know that it's in desktop? Aha. It's a very good question. We're actually going to utilize media queries in CSS okay. uh, to handle this. So in our widget template, uh, we're actually going to put um, a data attribute on our um, say list item or uh, another component to pass in uh, an attribute to say uh, data dash hide in desktop. If it's true, hide it uh, with a media query, anything that's larger than what, 1024 or, or, or something along those lines. And actually we could probably utilize the, um, like a mix in from, from Bootstrap uh, directly. All right. Um, I don't think the field needs to be required. Um, no reason they should have to set it um, because, well, it's a Boolean field, so it's kind of hard to make that one uh, required. A um, couple other notes here, um, just so you have them in, in, in your back pocket. If you're working with other types of fields, some of the limitations uh, become important. Do you want to restrict the characters or do you want to use things like regular expression uh, to do uh, any validation? Um, you can do some of those types of things uh, as well. So let's go ahead and do done there. So we're gonna have this new field hide in desktop nav. It's gonna be a yes, no, and we can save the changes. Behind the scenes, Siphonic does all the stuff that uh, it needs to, to add the field into the backend editing screens. Um, also add any database stuff that it needs. Um, and now, uh, as soon as it's done saving, we can then go and reload our um, titles and properties pages of Siphonity and then interact with this particular field. So it's a question. Could you yeah. add a custom field that is like for multiple pages? Like, could you share? Or is it always on a per page basis? So this is actually for all pages. Oh, in okay. this particular case. Yep. <laughs> and it's actually for all page types as well. Uh, so this works for group pages and redirect pages as well, because you might want to create one of those um, to show or hide in, in desktop navigation as well. Sure. Yep. Good question. So we saved the changes. It's all done and ready. So we can just go ahead and go on back to pages here. And let's see if we reload this. So we'll give this a second to reload here. Yeah, I remember you being a bit of a space nerd, right? I like space. Yeah. I've actually uh, I've had the pleasure of going to a space shuttle launch, which, oh, which yes. was pretty pretty cool when I was a when I was a child. So that was a Very pretty cool. lucky experience. And yeah, well, actually, no, we did this because like that day, remember that was the that day was that the they launched, launch, or, yeah. or or was the day after or something. Yeah. It was pretty close to proximity. I mean, it's like our senses are just like so overwhelmed. Like that's just like just another headline because like we are just dealing with so much stuff every day. Oh no, right? Yeah. Yeah, between, yeah, you know, riots and pandemics and, oh, by the way, we launched the space shuttle. That one got ignored. <laughs> um, all right. So 
here we're back in the titles and properties of our homepage. If we take a brief scroll down to the bottom, let's hide our advanced stuff. We're now going to have custom fields and check it out. Nice. My page in desktop mode. Okay, so now we can hide the page. Here's our little, um, you know, information, help text, whatever you'd like it. So this hides the page when it's in desktop mode. Whoops. There we go. Okay. I don't think we want to hide the home page, so we're gonna we're gonna leave it unchecked for now. But <clears throat> I can, t uh, but we can definitely do that. So now the users have the capability of checking or unchecking uh, this box for um, you know their their needs. And now they don't have to call a developer to say, "Hey, add this you know special do a hickey and the what's a majabi to do the who's a what's it right." I mean, mm -hmm. they can just come in here, they check the box, and and everybody's uh, happy. All right. Yeah. So now we gave them the ability to uh, easily check that box uh, for their capabilities of manipulating uh, components um, in in the screen itself. So uh, the next step of the process would be for us to um, extend um, the uh, the model itself. So. Basically, what's going to happen is the navigation widget itself um, has a predetermined model, which which we discussed already. Uh, so do all the, the widgets, but the model itself doesn't know anything about this new new field uh, that we've added, and we need to know if that specific page that the user checked the box on did did they check it or didn't they check it. So we got to pass that boolean value from the server now down to our view model uh, itself. So we're going to have to. Um, uh, write some some customizations or extensions uh, to Sitefinity. Um, we're not working with an, uh, an additional class library at this point, but just to note, we could add an additional class library to hold our extension logic um, in another library, which we're going to do. We're just not going to do it today. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna create a new folder um, in our Sitefinity web app here uh, that we'll just call extensions for now. Extensions. How close did I get? Extensions. Okay, I think that's right. In the extensions folder, we're gonna um, we're gonna need two classes uh, in order to um, model our models that we have to override. And 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 this is all documented uh, in in uh, our our docs. In fact, let me uh, let me just kind of show you. And this I'll kind of teach you how our docs work too at the same time here. So let me uh, let me do this. Extend model, I think, is where this one is. All right, I think this is the same code. Okay, so here's uh, this example here. So it's going to talk about how you extend it. So here's uh, just a brief look into some of our documentations. Again, free, open. Um, so this one is uh, doing it in a separate class library. So we're going to kind of fudge this a little bit. They're doing it the, the way I typically prefer, but just for the, the sake of things and, and the speed of things, we're just going to go ahead and do it uh, directly in um, the Sitefinity web app itself. But it doesn't matter either way. Both ways are acceptable. Okay, so here's the documentation on, on how you might do that. It's going to tell us to, um, you know, import some NuGet packages. Again, this is for a separate class library. Again, that's really a best practice. One, it makes your code a little bit more portable. Two, you can write things like integrations and unit testing and do all the, the .NET stuff that, that we're used to uh, with other uh, you know applications. Um, so here, this, this first custom type, um, this is going to override the data model of the iData item uh, for our uh, navigation model, okay? Um, I've already got both of these already uh, created because I didn't, you know, because I'm so successful at doing all this, right? I'm going to just paste them in here. Uh, won't let me. Please? Paste? No? Okay. Why won't it let me paste it in there? Okay. I'll just drag them and drop them in there instead. Same difference, right? So while you're doing that, really dumb question. Like, is there, mm -hmm. like, pre-built extensions? Is there, like, a marketplace of sorts where we could get stuff there absolutely yeah. is sam nice. my friend check this out so if we go to and we go to the marketplace nice so yeah absolutely so we got some add-ons some additional extensions 
Um, so like e-commerce, you can find in here. So this is um, our, our uh, commerce add-on uh, that, that you can utilize for Sitefinity. Um, like a Dynamics connector. Now, some of these are paid. Um, some are, are open source and or free. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a number of different things. A Mopinion plugin, um, e-commerce. I got one in here somewhere. Uh, here we go. Pardot connector. This one's open source. You know why? Because mm -hmm. I wrote it. Um, nice. So absolutely, yeah. You can you can get in here. You can add to the marketplace. Um, you can of course consume from the marketplace. Um, and these are done and, and vetted by um, you know team members here. Cool. Very cool. Yep. Absolutely. Mailchimp's. Uh, I don't know. I can't even remember what all is in here. Yeah, a bunch yeah. of stuff. But yeah, feel yeah. free to, to to navigate on over here and, and check out um, you know what we got going on um, in there. Yeah. What the what the chicken dance. We're all about chickens on this show. I don't know how it got started. Like somebody mentioned chickens, and now we have coded yeah. chickens, like custom emotes you can use in the chat room. Right. 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 All right. So let's head on. Okay. So first, um, let's take a look at the uh, two different classes I brought in. So one, the first one is for the custom node view model. So the node view is the Sitefinity page node. So this is this is the model and the node that again is uh, uh, passed around into Sitefinity um, and around. So this one needs to know about that new uh, Boolean field. Jonathan, your, that, text, your yeah. text is too small. Oh yeah, we're in a different program. Yeah. Does like control uh, well command plus? No, you're on, you're on Windows. I would normally just do command plus plus. Wow, it zooms the whole thing, huh? It's not like uh, it's not like uh, Visual Studio where it just does one window. That's I'm cool. sure you can like go into settings and then you can just bump up the fonts. Oops, let me. Uh... Yeah, it's fine. Give me that. But I mean, this this works too. I mean, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You, on, you just see less of your screen because it's that's all right. It zoomed in the whole thing. I know it's there. I think. No, I'm kidding. Okay, sorry. I, it wanted to install an extension for me. Whoops. Go out of the way. Okay. So this is the uh, navigation node model. <clears throat> We've added a new field in here called uh, hide in desktop. Okay. This is the field that will be passed down to the view itself. We also need to get the specific field from uh, our, our item or this, this being the actual page node itself. Here is the name of the field that we called it in um, Insightfinity, which we actually gave it a little bit different name, hide desktop nav. We actually had a little different name. So let's go double check our name here because um, I already forgot what I called it. <laughs> I think there's an in in there somewhere hide in desktop nav. I'm just going to copy this. I like to copy them right from here. Uh, and then that way I don't fat finger anything or make any silly mistakes. Yeah, so we're, we, we're, we're professional software developers. We are experts at copying and pasting. That's right. Sometimes we don't uh, even understand, but we still. <laughs> the, the, the worst things for a programmer is when you cannot explain why something is working. Yeah. Yes, uh, we've definitely been there. Um, so what this is doing here is I've actually written a, uh, a custom method down here uh, that does a little bit of uh, uh, some some try parsing um, on this actual bool value and just to make sure we don't have any exceptions, right? Because um, it could be nullable, right? And so we just, again, want to make sure. And then we also do some casting um, uh, of, the of the type map. So we make sure... Um, it is of type page node. Uh, if it's not, then something's you know maybe not going right or whatever. But we double check what type it is, um, and then we get the custom field value. Uh, the field name is what we pass in here, which is from up here, and then we we convert it to string. And then again, we're just using standard .NET stuff that you expect here. If obviously if this fails, it it always returns false in this case. Okay. So this was something you uh, you dragged in from the docs, right? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I yeah, I had already pre-made it. And, okay. And All right. it. Gotcha. But yeah, this is this is really the same same. It's a similar example to uh, what's placed. Whoops, in these uh, documents here. Gotcha. 
Yep. So in this one here again, we we overrode the the data model, um, in, in this particular case, and we also need to override um, the uh, additional model for the navigation widget as well. So let's look at look at that one. So this is the navigation model. So the navigation model didn't know anything about that that Boolean. Uh, value as well. So we're doing some additional uh, checking um, and uh, passing around the new custom node view model. So basically, the out of the box Sitefinity node view model wasn't wasn't the same. So in, in order to override it, we need to then insert our view model. Oh, it's when I move my hand that makes it kind of do some disco moving, huh? <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. Okay, like, sorry. Plays with the um, lights. Like you, when you move your face back yeah. and forth, it, it, it changes it the lighting. Does. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'll, I'll try to stand still. Um, <laughs> You're good. You're good. I'm way too animated for that. Um, so here again, we're, we're using our new model here instead of the out of the box node view model. So we've overridden that one, and now we're here utilizing both of ours, and we're actually going in our global ASCX to use dependency injection to override these models. So we're going to pull in one more file, and that's a global ASCX file. So let you me... said uh, you said dependency injection. That's a hard concept sometimes. Well, it's an easy concept, but sometimes we don't understand why we are using it. And even after doing uh, professional software for like 15 years, I don't think I can like right. teach somebody like a one hour class on dependency injection because I'll get confused myself. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's definitely, you know, not not necessarily, um, you know, straight, straightforward. So right. I, I, I get it. So we're going to go with a new file here. We'll call it global. A S A X. Okay, and we'll see if I don't even know if this is gonna. Yeah, it's not. An, yeah, we know it's not an extension you can help with. Um, okay, so let me grab a couple other components here off another screen. All right. Actually, actually creates. I forgot it creates two files. So let's do it like this. All right. So let's go ahead and. All right. So I, I borrowed a different global ASCX here. So let's take a look at at this. Most of these components we don't need. So I'm just going to remove a few things here. So don't don't mind me. Okay, so there are a couple things in here to make note about for Sitefinity specifically. So when the application starts, um, we have our typical application start method of um, a, a .NET web application. Within there, Sitefinity has its own components called the bootstrapper. When the component is bootstrapped, we have an event that fires then, and then we can additionally uh, add any uh, additional custom logic that we might need. In this case, we're going to register our new model, which will look something like this. All right, so here we're going to uh, use the front end module current dependency resolver. We're going to rebind the original, whoop, I navigation model to our new custom navigation model. Okay. Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, this is a big line of code. Um, wh yeah. What is the front front end module, and what do you mean by current? Like, is, is this a Sitefinity module? Yep. So this is yeah. So this is a Sitefinity yeah. uh, interface that um, that is utilized. So the front end module is a Sitefinity component that comes from. Uh, let's see. This comes from our. Let me double check which. This comes from our our front end. Um, using class. Oh, I already got them all up here. Cool. Um, using classes. Let me. I don't know. Can I? Let's see if we can get any goodies out of it in. Ah, no definition. And then current being the current uh, context, and then utilizing the dependency revolver to rebind the I 
navigation model to our current custom navigation model. So this is the first time it's binding it, like, or why are you rebinding it? Uh, because Sitefinity itself, uh, with this original implementation, uh, has oh, found right, it. Oh, right, right. Yes, yeah. yes. And then you changed it, and then you wanted to rebind it. Now I'm okay. changing it. Yep. Gotcha. So Sitefinity, uh, we do we do drink our own champagne, if you will. So we write our our modules really um, uh, the same way. So we write all of our um, you know stuff to follow the, the same practices. And then I just got Visual Studio to work again, so I think we can probably switch back over to that here in a second. Let me just make sure this opens up. Um, and then, and then that way we can get some good IntelliSense on this stuff here. Hey, for what's what uh, VS Code was really trying to help you, like, here's an extension, here's an extension, I can help. I know, yeah. I was yeah, it was. I just wasn't ready to click through all of them. You know, install them while you guys were were watching me diligently try to code here. Operative word try. All right, let me move this out of the way, guys. Get this out of your way, and we can move back to um, Visual Studio here, which makes things. A How did you get it easier. to work? Like uh, it was completely uh, off license, right? So apparently. Uh, I think somebody changed my subscription level on my MSDN here at Progress, and I didn't have the enterprise level of Visual Studio anymore. I only got access to the professional level. You have been downgraded, sir. I've been downgraded. <laughs> <sighs> Give me a moment. I gotta collect myself. <sighs> okay, I'm good. No. <laughs> Never been downgraded before. <laughs> good. Uh, I opened the wrong solution, though. open this one and for what it's worth like i almost never have had a really strong reason like unless we are shipping like production apps a lot where you're <laughs> using some of the features like i'm actually fine with whatever i get out of community absolutely yeah yeah um yeah and uh i mean there's some stuff in enterprise which is great but yeah, yeah. it doesn't doesn't typically affect my 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 needs um for sure, I'm definitely not that uh, of a robust of coder, I suppose. And like some of the testing and some of the team integration stuff is, is definitely better. True, true, true. All right, so I'm just including a couple things here um, in Visual Studio uh, now that we've added a few more folders outside of the scope here. And whenever you get a chance here, your um, font size needs to be bumped up. Yep, yep, I noticed. I thought it's... Oh, no, this because my first time opening this bad boy. All right, I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger here in just a second. Okay. And how's that? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go a little bit more. A little bit more. All right, well, must not have saved our changes in the other IDE. All right, let me get rid of those. Okay, now let's get back to it. I feel a little bit better here. And let me repaste, not that, this line. Also, too, what we forgot to do was we probably need to change some namespacing in those two models that we copied and pasted. I bet they're not whoops, in the correct namespace either. And that's also the wrong that's also the wrong line of code. Let me grab the right line of code here. We don't need to extend the navigation model. We want to extend or we need to extend the navigation, not the, the the other. Um, so let's double check our namespacing here. Ah, there we go. Our namespacing was off. So let me go site finity uh, web app dot extensions. Extensions. Okay. And we'll use that in our other one as well. Okay. That'll help us out a little bit. And let's see if we can get this to resolve here. Any, yeah, boom. Okay, any other questions, Sam, about our dependency injection here? No, surprisingly, makes sense. DI. Okay. Yeah. 
right? So now what we can, so now we'll gain access to that Boolean view, to where we can go and um, manipulate our uh, our view itself to pass in some uh, additional uh, information. So I got one more thing that we're gonna go and borrow. So let me get one more component opened here. Alright, here and here. Now, in our view file, we need to, again, let the, the DOM know about when a page should or shouldn't uh, be hidden. And again, the way we're going to do it is by a data attribute, and then we're going to access that data attribute uh, via uh, CSS. So let me get my little data attribute here. And then we're also going to need to change uh, one other component in our um, our view itself, and that's going to be which model we're utilizing. So out of the box, we use, of course, the Sitefinity, uh, the default model, which is called navigation model. Well, we've now replaced it with our custom navigation model. So we're going to make we need to make sure um, that the view knows about those as well. We also have our main top nav view, which is the one that we're currently using in this specific custom template that we've uh, drawn. So we're going to uh, make a few adjustments uh, in here uh, as well. Uh, so here is where our initialization of uh, our unordered list is, which is our, our navigation. Um, you can see here, though, one, it's, it's using, using the, the node view model. That's actually not going to work in this case because we need a custom node view model or, or whatever we called ours, which happens to be custom navigation or custom node view model. So I'll just borrow the name from over here. So we're going to change this type here. But when I do this, though, it's actually going to throw, uh, throw an exception because this type that it originally passes in might not be of that particular type, right? But they all inherit from the same interface, so we can actually cast them across each other. So what I'm gonna do here is just do a, a, a simple casting uh, and, and make this a new, uh, a custom node view model. It's now complaining that I don't have uh, a reference to it, so we can go ahead and quickly add a using in here. So let's add using not exclamation point at sign using and we'll go site finity web app dot not all app dot extensions and that'll get us into our custom node view model so now we got the node uh, view model we're, we're passing this around um, we got to do it one other place here this one needs to be a custom node view model as well um, and we have another method down here, <clears throat> custom node view model, any other ones? Okay, good, good, good. Oh, see here, it's also giving us some errors. We got to cast this before we pass it in, cast here, and cast here. Uh, you could do it in another place, uh, doesn't particularly matter. I just like, I just do it there. Um, okay, so we've We've oh, we've uh, changed our our method signatures here um, to oh, this one up here is going to fail too. I know that, and this one will fail too. I don't know why I didn't give us IntelliSense. Okay, and you know that we did it all there. Programmatically, it probably would have made more sense to do it here afterwards. That's okay. Never mind. Don't you know? Either way, I chose that way. Next time, I'll do it a better way. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so we got that portion done. So now we can actually access the property itself um, that is on that uh, custom node view model. And what is that property? That property is called hide in desktop. So now we can utilize that in our view. Uh, in order to pass it in as uh, a data attribute. So let's go ahead and let's put that on there uh, somewhere. 
So I think we probably want to indicate that at on the, the LI level or the list item level um, <clears throat> to where we can say, um, you know, this, this list item specifically uh, needs to be hidden. And I think I can do it something uh, like this. So this is going to do data dash desktop dash hide data being HTML5, uh, you know, element that you can place onto your uh, component. We're going to then in CSS target this specific um, attribute when it's true in screens larger than, you know, 1024 ish range or basically large size screens we're gonna we're gonna show uh those items uh once they get into that particular uh or hide them once they get into that particular size excuse me okay yeah i mean i, I like it this is pretty standard stuff like uh media yeah. query yeah 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 and uh yeah we'll do those media queries and in, in in our uh main style sheets here in, in in just a few moments i'm just gonna really step down through all these and make sure all all of my list items my top level li's uh get um that attribute on it so they all can be uh hidden when needed okay uh, one more there there got one there and boom Okay, so that'll at least get the data attribute in there. Um, CSS, we won't need to re recompile or do anything else at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, build the solution. So I'm just gonna do a control shift B. Um, you can, you know, right click, build however uh, makes sense for you guys, whatever's easiest. Um, I already have this hosted in IIS under my local host. So we'll just build it here and then we'll reload uh, our front end screen. Actually, while that's doing that too, let me um, let me get my grunt running because we'll or not grunt um, my SAS compiler running SAS preprocessor, and we'll get that running. So I'm just going to open this in a new file explorer here. I'm just going to the uh, package, um, our resource package source, and I'm just going to open a new PowerShell window from here, and I'm just going to do an npm start. Uh, this ships with Sitefinity. We did cover it in uh, previous shows. Um, so please review that on, on what exactly we're doing here. NPM start uh, simply runs the, the compilations of the SAS um, and any other NPM scripts that we may have running. Um, and then also uh, sets up a watch of those files as well. So if we do modify any of those SAS files, uh, it then will uh, re, re pre process uh, the uh, CSS or SAS. Okay, so I'm gonna get that running so it's it's available for us. Oh, and ooh, we got a successful build. Yay to that! And let's just go ahead and we'll jump right into say uh, maybe the home page here, and I'll just do a hard cache and 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 reload here. So once we do this, the Sitefinity loading gears, which you'll become very accustomed to and enjoy, uh, will pop up here in just a moment. All right, so while that's reloading and we're double checking that, of course, we didn't have any errors or or um, anything else, we can actually go ahead and let's let's move on to another step and let's go ahead um, and let's start at least our CSS file um, uh, for this. And by CSS, I mean SAS. So those are still living in our coriander lane underscore BS4 assets, uh, source, project, SAS, uh, and then we have a widget section. We actually have a, a navigation specific uh, SAS sheet uh, that we can utilize. Um, since I don't remember exactly how to do this, we're going to go look it up. But in here, basically, uh, we're going to set uh, as part of the header. So anything in the header class or header um, element. So we have that up here. So we're, this is all wrapped in, in header. So this will be header. And then we're going to look for uh, li data dash uh, t. I already for my Des memory. desktop hide. Yep. Yep. There it is. There Thank you, Sam. I've slept since then. Actually, I don't think I have. Have I? Mm, don't tell anybody. Uh, okay. And equals. 
So in this case, when it equals false, and actually I think I gotta wrap all this, don't I? And do that. There we go. <clears throat> when it's false, um, Well, actually, no, no, no. We'll do this the opposite, opposite way, opposite way. I changed my mind. Since we're doing desktop or, or uh, mobile first, we'll actually show it. We'll actually show it first and then hide it later. Sorry, sorry. I was going backwards uh, in in my brain there. Sorry about that. So we'll need to look up the uh, the uh, media query. Uh oh, looks like we got an exception though. So let's troubleshoot uh, the error first and and see what's going what's going on there. Um, so, how do we troubleshoot an error? Good question, Sam. I'm glad you asked. So, here's my, my file structure. Um, so, I'm going to head over here into the Site50 web. Nope. And we're going to go into Sitefinity web app, app data. Yeah, that's what Sitefinity. I was trying to remember to. Log files. Yep. Logs, yep. And then here's all of our, our current logs. We'll sort them by date. And here's the most recent one, 2.09 p.m. We can go ahead and take a peek see at that and see what's going on here. <clears throat> so let's scroll all the way to the bottom, which we already are, and see what's going on. System null exception. All right. Object not set to an instance of an object. All right. So something is not set. So in custom node view model line 39. Custom node view model, line 39. Where are we at? Okay, so in here, field name. Okay. Oh, you're, not, you're not doing a check if the oh. field name is. Well, actually, the bigger problem is uh, we didn't rename this after we moved it. Uh, uh, I I to, so it's actually hide in desktop nav. So I got the name wrong here. Um, so I think the problem was uh, the get. So we got into here. So what we also should do is we can actually do one other thing here. We can actually go and page node dot does. Oh, spell page node, right? Dot uh, does, I think it is does field exist or field exists. Is it something like this? Get custom field value. Uh, maybe that's only on dynamic items. Um, um, Do a little more checking in there. To, uh, okay, so let's try this. Huh. All right, move this way on dynamic items. Okay, well, that's okay. We can do it. What do you mean dynamic items? Uh, oh, so, um, so something like news uh, or um, a custom content type has a... Um, an accessor called does field exist. So I could check uh, beforehand to see if uh, the custom field uh, exists, but I don't, I can get the value here, but I don't, I guess we don't have it on the page node. Um, or if we do, I just don't remember the name. I'll have to go look it back up. Um, get properties, as child nodes. I might have to go back and look that one up. Uh, all right. Yeah, I don't think it had. I don't think it's got the one I want. All right. Well, yeah, we've at least fi fix yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fixed the name. That one. Yeah, we fixed the name. So that'll do it. So I'm going to build it one more time. And while it's building, and then once we start loading Syfinity again, I got to go look up the, uh, the mix in for a large desktop media query. Cause I don't remember what it is. All right. So let's go get this reloading again here. And let's look up bootstrap for large media query mix in, right? 
the mixer. Oh. That's not what I wanted. So really we want it in large or extra large. Ah, here it is right here. Okay, so. So which way do I need to go? So since we were... Okay, so include media breakpoints up to small. Uh... I just want anything large and above. <laughs> ah, here we go. Only. How about this one? Not only. How about... So it'd be large and up, right? So we need something like this. So this goes large and up, right? I think this should work. All right, so let's put this down here. Oops, what did I just press? Well, I think I just accidentally built it again. That was smart. I don't know how I accidentally just built it again, but I did. Hey, the good news is to see it worked, but I accidentally just built it again. So we're gonna <laughs> reload it one more time here. Um, okay. So let's go back here. Okay, so this should be anything large and above. Now we can go um, <clears throat> li data dash hide in desktop. Display none. Okay. So hopefully in anything above a uh, large screen, it should then, oops, it should then hide our um, navigation that's not supposed to be there. Okay. That all make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So one, let's open this up and let's make sure that our data attribute actually persisted. So let's take a look at this. Ah, there it is right there. Nice. Nice. Oh, also notice since we're working in .NET, everything's capital. Okay, I did make it capital. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot if I made a capital. Um, okay, so now let's go set a property here. Um, what page are we on here? Let's not the home page because that won't definitely need to show. But let's set one of those other ones, like the my account. That won't. That we don't need that one to show in desktop. We only need it to show uh, in in mobile, uh, at least across the top. We might show it in the footer or other places um, in desktop, but at least across the top, we only want it to show um, in in mobile. So let's go over here. Let's go titles and properties. And let's go ahead and check the box. Hide page in mobile. Save changes. Head back on over here and let's reload. Okay, so that was the account page. Ah, there it is, look. This should nice, be the account page. Nice. See this one says true and the other one say false. So it should still show here, yay. And now if I boom, uh-oh. Okay, so it's still showing there. What do we do wrong there? So I sus whoops. So I, sus I suspect my media query isn't probably working the way I expect or intended it to. Um, so let's take a peek at that. All right, so here, and let's see here. So li data dash desktop hide true data. Oh, see, that's why. Yep. Wrong name. <laughs> Desktop height. Sorry, I should have got that. All right. One more time for the kids at home here. And wow, I'm I'm scooting right up to uh to the end of the time here too. This is great. It's gonna be a, hopefully our last win. Not our last. I mean, last for today. Okay, it's still showing though. Well, do you need to do a fresh like hard re. Oh yeah, let's let's double check that. Good point. 
Ah, there we go. Perfect. There so it hit. Go. Hey, good, hooray! Good, good, good. So these two, one, two, three. Woo! All right. So now, what we've done as developers is now we've passed on the capabilities of our non-technical members uh, or our marketers, our editors, our authors to be able to control the navigation without having to talk to us. Um, thank goodness. No, I'm kidding. I love marketers. I really do. Uh, but, you know, th this again, this is the major point and focus really behind utilizing uh, the CMS. So, um, Let's recap here. What do you what do you say, Sam? Yeah, about yeah, 10 minutes absolutely. Left. Let's just recap and, and, and talk about what we covered here today. Um, and then, of course, please, anybody that had any questions or anything, you know, pop them in here. Um, and then uh, we'll reconvene in a couple weeks. Um, so what we did today, uh, everyone, was we created a um, a custom view. Well, we already had a custom view uh, for our navigation, but we added a custom field. Uh, for pages. This field's intention was to be able to show and hide a page specifically in desktop navigation. We utilized SAS um, to uh, hide the page in a large screen or bigger. We use Sitefinity um, extension points by using dependency injection to override the page node navigation model and the um, navigation model itself so we could get that Boolean field that the user configures in the Sitefinity UI and pass it down to our view so we can easily uh, hide and show desktop navigation without technical knowledge. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Not to, oh, you're showing a blank screen. Maybe bring up our nice, our homepage. Oh, it's yeah, a nice yeah. way Sorry to about that. Uh, And let's not forget that um, uh, in the midst of all of this, you figured out how to open up Visual Studio by <laughs> fixing your trial and licensing on the yeah. go. <laughs> on the go, we're killing it. Yeah, and uh, let's not forget, uh, we are giving away swag and uh, Abakan in the chat room wants some pretty sweet Sitefinity swag. Uh, Jonathan was wearing that shirt uh, last week, last but not today. Week, yeah. But, not uh, today, no. Yeah. I do I do have a quick, uh, I do have a, uh, a screenshot of it, though, if anybody wanted to see it here real quick. Um, yeah. So Plus some stickers, so. Yep. We are, we are looking professional. <laughs> so it'll look something, uh, it'll look something about like uh, these here. There you go. So like a sticker them. and t-shirt. Uh, please also indicate uh, if you'd like, um, a a, um, a a female cut shirt or or a male they're just a little bit different sizing wise um but we'll we'll make sure you got all the information but yeah these are the swag that you're gonna get so congratulations um as a reminder um for anybody in north america please enjoy the holiday weekend safely maybe continue some social distancing um enjoy some fireworks if you're into that kind of bang bang boom stuff i'm going to travel to see some family sam you got any uh, plans for the the holiday no not really just introduce the kiddo to some fireworks uh, safely oh yeah that's right beautiful yeah, yeah. yeah just cook in oh. some more yeah all right, so this was good. This was good. I think, uh, like, where we started with uh, Visual Studio issues, uh, you came around quite a bit, and getting something to show, like a custom field that you're able to capture with your media queries and act accordingly, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm liking where we're going with this. Uh, so, great progress. Good stuff. Yeah, great day. It's great All day. right. Yeah. Sam, as always, thanks for hosting me. I appreciate absolutely. your time and everybody who joined us. Thanks again so yeah, much. Absolutely. And again, we'll uh, reconvene on the 13th. Yes. Now, uh, chat room, hey, Abakan is saying thank you so much. Thank you for answering your question uh, correctly. We, we love you. Uh, and folks in the chat room, I see uh, some good stuff going on. So Microsoft uh, Developer, that's a uh, account which uh, I think they tweet out uh, or, or I mean, they tweet, uh, stream out a bunch of things. Uh, they are talking about AI to save lives. So I'm going to hand you over to uh, Microsoft Developer. Go uh, read that channel and see what's up. So that's it. And uh, thank you so much uh, from us. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.